Hi, I am Sarana Mitchell, and this is the third in a series in the OECS Clean Oceans Journalist Challenge. This week, I take a look at sewage and the runoff that contaminate our marine environment. Grenada says it's at the advanced stage of creating a policy that will manage the discharge of sewage from yachts into the sea. We are looking at a marine waste management policy, right? Um, because as you, as you well know, um, an aspect of the tourism sector is the yachting industry. And um, well, the yachts are essentially boats in the sea. And they have human beings using these boats and they have waste that is generated, right? So um, essentially we have to ensure that, um, you know, the, the disposal of waste from these vessels are regulated properly. And so the waste does not go into our, our oceans or seas and, and contaminates, um, you know, the water and, and, you know, and the neighboring environment. So we are, we are looking at um, putting together a marine waste management policy that would essentially um, regulate the amount of waste that is disposed in our um, near shore environment. And um, that is at an advanced stage. And what, once that is implemented, it will be in line with international you know, regulations and it will ensure that our, you know, our, our near shore environment um, is protected. Grenada is among 25 countries in the Caribbean and Latin America that has signed the LBS protocol, that is the Land-Based Sources and Activities Protocol, which looks at limiting sewage and other runoff. This is the only legally binding protocol that exists in the world, mm, where these countries have, have committed themselves to take certain actions to protect the sea. Because all of us that love to go to the beach, and if that water is dirty, none of us wants to swim, right? We would turn our backs and walk away. So as young as you are, or as old as you are, you have a responsibility to ensure that whatever comes into your home, it doesn't end up into the ocean. The LDS protocol seeks to address the issue of domestic waste and sewage, right? So it's not only dealing with, 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 with solid material, it's also dealing with liquid. So what comes from your bathroom, from your kitchen, from your um, your, 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 your toilets, etc., your, your, your septic system, we have to ensure that it doesn't get into the water courses, into the rivers, the streams, the ravines, and eventually into, into the, the, the sea. So um, this, this protocol seeks to encourage the countries to, to um, make sure that all domestic waste is properly managed. The second one that we have to look at, and, and this is one that we in Grenada are very, very concerned about, is the issue of what I would call industrial waste, meaning the waste that comes from the factory, the sugar factory, the, um, the, the, the curry factory, the Coca-Cola factory, Fortune Foods that make that make um, impact, right? Um, River and Twine Rum Distillery. All of those, those big uh, companies, they would, even if the guys who, who have the, the concrete batching plants and the waste, they, when they wash their trucks, all that cement and, and coal oil, etc., that, that, that ends up in the sea, we have a responsibility to manage that and to take care of it. And then the, the, the other one is the, the waste that comes from agriculture, right? All of us love to ripe bananas, right? You like apples, you like avocados, you like mangoes. You like chin up, right? No? Yes. You don't like skin up? Yeah? You like golden apple? Yeah. Oh, okay. Right? But in order for these plants to produce their fruit, you like watermelon? Yeah. Right. Huh? Tomatoes? Yeah. Good. So in order for those for you for you to get that good sweet watermelon and, and tasty tomatoes. There's an is, is issue of agricultural waste. Sometimes the farmers use chemicals to ensure that they keep pests and disease away, but that chemical could be very, very harmful to the environment and even and, and to us also as humans. So the agricultural waste is also an issue that we need to manage. The waste that comes from the farms, right? Even if you're growing it in your own backyard, 
sometimes you buy you, you buy um your, your mommy may buy sevens powder uh, or something like that and use it and that could be very very harmful so um that's why we we we, we try to to um to to encourage as much organic as possible in fact we have been, we, the ministry has been taking a lot of steps to reduce the importation of chemicals into the country right even the issue of fertilizer we have we have we have we have we have made a decision to cut back on as much as possible on fertilizer and encourage farmers to use composting they use what we call climate smart agriculture practices right because naturally we have very fertile soil but we have to but we still have to manage it so domestic waste is extremely important right that we that we manage it waste from factories and waste from the from the agriculture and um and and then you ha also have waste what we call from um what we call from 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 heavy machinery vehicles um when they travel on the road they have an oil leak etc even even um even waste from from like from 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 the trucks that spill their gravel and all, all of that when the rain falls, it goes into the drain, into the river, and eventually ends up in the sea. Now, we have been doing a lot of testing of the water in the Caribbean Sea. Even in Grenada, we test the water in the Grenada's Beach, we test the water in the Carnage, etc. And a lot of the countries in Latin America, Panama, um, Colombia, all of those countries are part of the agreement. And when we look at the quality of the water in the Caribbean Sea, that's on, on, the, on the western side of Grenada, we see that it's deteriorating rapidly. Right, so we have to take steps to to protect that beautiful water that's on Grandlands Beach. Right, Grandlands, the water on Grandlands Beach is part of the Caribbean, and on the eastern side of the island we have the Atlantic Ocean. So we have to protect the Caribbean Sea, that that side of the island where we get a lot of our fish, a lot of our tuna and marlin and snapper and and all those those those, those tasty tasty um seafood that we eat. They are, they, a lot of them is harvested from the Caribbean Sea. So we have to, pr to protect it. And of course, um, Nawasa has a very critical role to play in this because they deal with sewage, meaning waste from, from the tongue, from grand dance, etc. that people, people use their, 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 their bathrooms, their toilets, etc. It goes into that and, and it's discharged into the Caribbean Sea. Right? We have to manage that. So the LBS protocol seeks to look at all of those things and, and to manage it. The National Water and Sewage Authority, Nawasa, notes that it is in the process of sourcing the correct methods for two treatment plants it intends to build on the island so as to put an end to dumping raw sewage into the sea. We have two lift station, uh, what we call two pump, um, systems whereby we use marine outfall. One pumps, um, which is the younger of the two, it's um, in the area of Point Celine. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I'll, I'll say that south of the uh, strip in Point Celine. All right, we pump it out um, close to about half mile or thereabout. Um, or say about uh, a thousand feet from the shore. And that basically mixed with um, the, Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. There is very active mixing zone there. Also, there is another outfall which is closer to half mile. That is outside the Green Bridge area in St. George's, right? That one too has been located in a position where um, there should be active mixing. But um, what we do in addition to these um, two facilities, we do a monthly monitoring of all the coastal, the nearby coastal areas mm -hmm. from Bradwall all the way down to um, out of um, Point Celine area. And so on a monthly basis, we check the water quality to ensure that we keep within the bathing water. There is um, a Caribbean guideline of 200. Um, polyform units per 100 ml. That is for um, fecal and 35 of the same for. So on a, based on a monitoring, we have not, we are not seeing any unusual trends of say 
um, huge pollution growth, right? Of course, we are also affected by not just sewage, but sewage. There's a lot of attended to storm drains all around the tongue and so, where when based on the seasonal variation and the rainfall, you find a lot of these, uh, you could consider them point source. They get into the nearby water and so they influence our reading, all right? And um, in terms of what you stated earlier about specific degradation, I'm not sure that I can speak 100% to that. Okay, so granted that our, the concern is that our oceans are being um, polluted mm -hmm. and um, with the pumping of sewage into the water, granted mm -hmm. it goes to the coral reef area where mm -hmm. there's nutrification and it causes whatever issues. Mm -hmm. What is going to be done by your company in the next few years to change that? Is, or do you have plans of treating the sewage yes. before you put it out? Yes. There are plans. <clears throat> Number one, we were thinking of um, extending the outfall, like say um, in Greenbridge towards the, just to the edge of the ocean proper, beyond the coral reef, where, you know, um, based on the depth of the water, as you know, um, outfall, how it, they operate, is by virtue several factors um, are taken into effect. The depth of the water, the tidal, the strength of the um, tides and so, um, the whole mixing and also ultraviolet um, radiation, which decreases to a considerable manner the, um, any microorganisms. That was um, the thinking up to a few years ago. But our most current thinking is um, to do two treatment plans. One for the St. George's proper mm -hmm. area and one for Grandons. One is proposed um, to be located in the Queens Park um, and the other one somewhere in Cali's Bay. So the feasibility studies and so, all the, um, it's been pre-designed, everything. It, it's taken place as we speak. Okay. So I would say in the um, short and medium term, yes, that will be the way um, to go. We'll be going in that we'll um, install tertiary treatment plants. What are you going to be treating the, um, the sewage with? Have you been able to source? No, not, not as yet. This is um, the technology that will be employed is being um, zeroed in on now. Um, our law preference would have been to use something, whether aerobic, uh, aerobic or anaerobic, we are yet to 100% decide on it. Yes, from my, from my um, department, we would have made proposal to employ more um, an anaerobic process Therefore, you could have more of um, methane generation and benefit from waste energy, right? Mm -hmm. So as you know, methane, you could use it to generate electricity mm -hmm. um, and, and so forth. So in a broad sense, we are looking at a technology in which you can greatly benefit um, whatever it be the cost of, say, running that treatment plan, it should be greatly reduced because we, 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 tend, we, we try to break even by using con the, the energy, whatever raw material you can get from that treatment process, it will be used to do Power something. The, sy the, the system. Power the system. Okay. All right? And All right. that's um, why I, you know... Um, we try to advise against a purely um, aerobic system, which sometimes de demand huge quantities of air or oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, let's say air. Um, 
and a huge generation of activated sludge and so. So we try to reduce um, that cost, but we, st we, we are about zeroing in on the exact technology we'll be using. Okay, so tell me, um, what are some of the concerns do you have? You're the quality man. Uh -huh. What are some of the, the concerns that come up for you? Um, well, we have concerns all around, all right? Um, and mainly as it pertains to the marine environment. Mm -hmm. While yes, it's, it's, um, the process is pretty well managed now, but people are concerned. The degradation, as you mentioned earlier, of your coral reef, all right? Mm -hmm. A lot of them are in a bad way, right? But um, the problem is much bigger than um, the authority, which is Nawasa. Mm -hmm. um, the reefs are bombarded also from, as it were, runoff. As you know, there is no proper management of the disposal of um, waste and so in the, the upper streams. Mm. And therefore we, we have a lot of, you know, siltation is one, a, a, a big contributor at times to the degradation of reefs. And so it's a much wider concerns or concern of course, but um, we have other groups, you know, reach to reef um, programs and so mm -hmm. they are dealing with that aspect of it. But from Nawasa's viewpoint, mm -hmm. the, the concern has been, you know, many people of the opinion that they, bath, they are bathing in um, um, feces in infested water. And therefore what we do we monitor that so we can show at any point, we can demonstrate to people that here, these are our results, right? Mm -hmm. We monitor the um, bathing waters and therefore we could say to them, as far as we are concerned, we are doing okay for now. 35 root crop and vegetable farmers in the St. George's Northeast in Grenada are the first to be given the badge of reef guardian farmers in the Caribbean region. They have been educated on how their activities upstream affect downstream and have learned new farming practices. Reef guardian farmers, um, as you're saying, it is reef. We have to stress and to understand what we're doing uh, on the world reef. And to better understand um, reef guardian farmers, the, the idea was to protect the marine protected area and some of the things that was deposited in the, in the MPA. Mm -hmm. And while they were looking at the MPA to protect it, they realized that they were only spinning top in mud because while they were trying to remove all the debris and everything that is happening, they figure more and more they have ways to deal with. Um, um, Mr. Nimrod, who was a marine biologist with the St. George's University, came to my village one day and he was asking some people some questions along the way about farmers in our area. Mm -hmm. And one of the young men told him, well, he could ask Mr. Evans <laughs> because Mr. Evans is a farmer. So he met with me and he said, well, you want to ask me some questions about um, our farming practices? Mm -hmm. Practices, and I said, well, why? He said, because in the MPA, they realized that there's some um, activity and some deposit there that is coming from the, from the farm. And he said, they're looking at a program where they want to take care of the, of the reef, but they cannot take care of the reef if they don't look at the ridge. Mm. And we have to say reef guardian farmers. Well, from that day, um, I told him, well, look, I could set up a meeting with the whole farmers organization, except you don't make sense seeing I speak to me alone. But there are several farmers along the river coast. So he came, I think it was the following week, and we had a meeting with the Northeast Farmers Organization. And basically, that's how the, uh, the MPA uh, was developed looking from 
from a ridge to reef approach. Wow. So how, how does it make you feel realizing that what you're doing up in Willis, I am from the area, so I could say from Willis, from how does it make you feel knowing that what you do all the way up there is affecting all the way down there? While, while we look at it as a, as a sad situation, as a farmer and as a group, I think we feel proud knowing that we are the first farmers organization, not in Grenada, in the region to be considered as Reef Guardian farmers. Because 25 members of the Northeast Farmers Organization volunteer or commit ourselves to taking care of the reach, of the reef. Okay. How are we gonna do that and how it was discussed? We we're asked to change our farming practices. And there's a number of areas that uh, Mr. Nimrod and move on from Mr. Nimrod to Mr. Bali, who was in the Ministry of, of Agriculture by the Fisheries. And while it started just like Mr. Nimrod coming through the village, that, had, I mean, this has increased, I mean, so much so that Mr. Bali, who became the driving force behind the Rich Reef, has gone to several Caribbean islands as far as the Australian Barrier Reef to actually look into the MPA, how they could um, encourage the, the, the farmers um, in our area, not well, again, not only farmers in our area because they had gone beyond that, educating farmers on the practices that they do on their farm, how it is affecting the, the MPA. Okay. Now, I should say that what they were looking at in the MPA, they're looking at the coral and realized that the coral was being destroyed. And what they discover, the, 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 some of the material that is being deposited on the, on the coral is what causing the algae to grow and destroy the, the, um, the, the, the reef. Mm. Apart from the, 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 uh, uh, the yachts who come in the area and deposit whatever comes from the, from, the, um, from the boat, uh, the fisher folks who go and use some of the fishing equipment that they use that is creeping the, the coral and, 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 and destroying it. And I always say the number one, the number two business in Grenada, dumping some rich, rich, rich <laughs> vitamins in, the, in, in some of the areas <laughs> that cause the algae, that cause some of the algae to grow. Mm -hmm. But we as, 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 the, as the Reef Guardian farmers, <laughs> to again, Mr. Balio, mm -hmm. look at areas how we can and, and play a part to um, um, stop destroying the 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 the, uh, the coral. We were asked as farmers to give up ten feet of land close those farmers closest to the river. To give up ten feet of land close those who didn't closest to the river. Okay. And really, and really don't plant anything within 10 feet from the river, um, from the river. That is called a buffer zone. Uh, you want to ask a question? No, 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 this is good. I'm just listening. I'm just listening. I'm learning. Okay. And that is called a buffer zone. Mm -hmm. what, what, the, what, the, what the buffer zone um, is doing, when you use your irrigation system, are, are, are the rainfall. When that water comes, especially for those who are maybe a little slope, that water is running straight into the river and it's taking all the silt and everything that is in that silt into the river. And what the river does, you take that all the material all the way down into the MPA. So when you get to the MPA and that was deposited all over the coral, you find you have a lot of nutrients in there. Okay. And that is basically what grow in the area and destroy, destroying the coral. Okay. So from a reef guardian standpoint of view, we're looking at what we could do up in the, in the higher most land, what we're doing that would affect the coral, what can we do um, 
to assist them in protecting in protecting the um, um the MPA. Okay. Apart from the buffer zone, mm-hmm. we we uh, we were given some um, two shredder. The purpose of the shredder now is to uh, encourage us to to get away from the chemical fertilizer and use more of natural uh, um, nutrients for the um, for the farm and for the crops that we're growing. We decided we we're, we're encouraged to make compost. So the compost will be, will be replacing the chemical fertilizer. What we are also asked to do and to continue doing, because most of the farmers um, are custom making contour drains, is to make contour drain. If you're on a slope and you have straight ridge, most farmers plant in ridge, and you make those ridge on straight banks, again, once the water and the, the, the rain and your irrigation system, that runoff water is going straight into the river. So we're using two things there to prevent silt and chemical um, fertilizer from the farm getting into the river. As I mentioned earlier, the buffer zone, and here we are using the contour drain. And we're asked to do those two things here. And I think a number of farmers still continue to practice doing that. I know as a farmer's organization, as we speak, we are doing the compost to try to utilize the compost on our farm and not depend um, solely on the chemical fertilizers. I hope I did not stray from the question you asked. No, me. no, 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 no. This is good. So I want to know because what new practices are you doing? Which river is that? Which river? The that's the what river you call it? The Bushiji River. If but you there, look, are, there are several different little um, streams that would enter into the Bushiji River. Right, and that's the thing we have to look in terms of how we how we look at the river. Mm-hmm. There are a number of rivers that come together mm-hmm. and form one river that enter into the bushes right there in Bushesu. You know where the bushes is down going towards towards yeah. the eastern side. Mm-hmm. That river is the bush. That river originated from the watershed all the way up in Willis. Yeah. There's also a branch of that river that comes through from the Anadale waterfall. Okay. And, and what a lot of people don't know, some of the, 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 the waste and some of the soap and some of the other things that, that people um, just casually wash in the river, even some of those things are, are having an effect, um, a negative effect on the, on the coral in the, in the bay. Yeah, because, but not many people wash in the river anymore, right? Well, no, but you still find, you see people going besides... Um, washing, they cook, they bathe, they carelessly just throw any waste material they have. They figure the, the river is the easiest place to, to throw it. Mm-hmm. If, if you go to any of this river, and I guess that could happen anywhere over Grenada, after a heavy rain downpour, look at the river and see what is floating down. Mm-hmm. Almost every form of beaver you could find, apart from the trees and branches, you'll find a Coke bottle, you'll find some kind of um, um, biscuit paper, uh, all those things. And what happened when those things get in the MPA? The fish are the first time you see something big and something big, what it will go, it grab and eat it. And that is helping to kill some of the fish in the area also too, because they swallow some of this plastic. This plastic go in the again and also causing problem, problem in, in the MPA. So what this, this program has done is educate you and made you more vigilant about your practices as a farmer. In so doing, you're helping you're helping your fellow fishermen, your brother, your brother um, aquaculturists. You you helping, you helping the um, the coral reefs, the MPA, and you're helping, of course, the fishes. So, so you you like Superman. You and you and the farmers are like super people. Well, well, the program went further than that because they 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 look at some of the schools along the river. Ah. And, and label them MPA schools, the Constant Methodist School, the Happy um, Primary School. Those are MPA schools that they, mm-hmm. they, they, the MPA decide to, to partner with these schools in how they can, in some of the practice that they're doing to, to, um, to eliminate some of the waste from the schools um, and to educate these children what, what really um, they could do to, um, to assist in the MPA. 
Okay. They had summer program where they had the school to participate. They had field trip where they take the, the, the kids to the, um, to, to, to the field area. We actually, as a farmer's organization, went to a glass button boat to go out in, in, into, the, into the MPA. And I mean, I, I, I mean, I was baffled. I was to look at, looking from just inside that boat, look down the amount of deposit that they have in the bay. Mm. I mean, you're seeing sheets of galvanized, you're seeing all kind of piece of board and, and bottles and it, it's, people really don't know the effect of what they're doing carelessly of not what is taking place in the south. Thank you for viewing Serana Mitchell Worlds. I'll be back next week with another in the series. Please like, comment, and share. I am Serana Mitchell. Have a good one. Thank you.